OBS plugins are a really great way to blah, blah, blah. You, uh, you know why you click this video, okay? You can do cool stuff with OBS, you get it. There were some really good ones that came out this year, some that you may have missed out on, such as this first one. Encoder Region of Interest Editor. What in the f does that mean? You ever notice in your stream that when you're just sitting in the main menu of your game, your camera looks perfect, but the instant that you actually start your game, you, your camera, becomes a blurry mess. Oftentimes when your stream has a lot of movement, OBS can struggle to keep everything clear, especially if there's a lot of things like grass or snow or effects going off in the screen. And so you're gonna get a lot of compression artifacts. And one of the first things to go bad is usually your camera. Well, this plugin allows you to define certain regions of the screen to have higher priority than the rest of the screen. And so you're gonna be able to make your camera stay clear at the expense of a little bit of quality everywhere else. So essentially you're able to sacrifice the quality of your gameplay just a little bit in order to make your camera look better for your audience. It works really well for games with small text. So if you find that the kill feed in your game is really blurry a lot of the time and you can't read the numbers, you can create a small region just around that text to make sure that it's always readable. If you play a lot of FPS games, you can even set it up so that the center of the screen, you know, like where all the action is, you can make that the most clear and then don't worry so much about what's happening on the periphery. I made a whole video on this plugin. I'll leave it linked up here or up over there. Do my eyes look like mega swollen in this camera? So I got like allergies. I look like the, I look like the Monka-esque guy. Stop being cringe and paying full price for Windows with our sponsor, VIP SD Keys. You can get a Windows 11 license for as low as $21. Just use my code NUTTY at checkout to get them for 30% off. And if you want to get them for a little bit cheaper, you can get a Windows 10 key for $15, and those can be updated to Windows 11 completely for free. You can pay using a secure payment method like PayPal. They'll send you an activation code immediately, and then you can put that in your Windows settings, and you're good to go. Check out VIP SD keys in the link down below. Any of you guys ever added so much to your stream that your OBS is like on the brink of imploding? You're dropping frames, your stream is stuttering, and you're not exactly sure why. Well, there is a plugin that's kind of like a resource monitor for OBS that tells you which sources and which filters are the most taxing in your PC so that you can get rid of them or change settings. If you use a lot of things like blur filters or high resolution video files, those can really add up and make you drop frames in your stream. The plugin is called Source Profiler. I'll be honest, that's a pretty terrible name. I don't know what's with developers. You guys are so smart, but you guys suck at coming up with names for plugins. I wish it was called something like OBS Resource Monitor or OBS Task Manager, because if you Google OBS Source Profiler, you're not even gonna find it. The plugin is currently in alpha and you must be using the latest version of OBS to use the plugin. The latest version of OBS just came out, it's OBS version 31. But once you install it, you'll find the source profiler in the menu under tools in OBS, and you can filter by scenes, by sources, filters. The thing you should pay the most attention to is the GPU usage. So take a look at which sources are taking the most GPU, and if there's anything you don't really need, you can either remove it or replace it with something else. So for example, if you have a 4K video file that's playing in OBS, maybe you can consider replacing that with a lower resolution 720p version to save on some resources. If you use some other OBS plugins, such as the Composite Blur plugin, which we talked about in another video, some of those plugins can use a lot of your GPU. So if you find that filter in this list here, you can go into that source, turn down the setting so you can still use the filter, but do it in a way that's not gonna destroy your stream. I'd recommend having the stats menu in OBS open while you do this. Your goal is to reduce your average time to render. Mine used to be about 15 milliseconds and since I stream at 60 FPS, anything over 16 milliseconds, I'm gonna start dropping frames and that's horrible that mine was that high. But you can see that right now mine sits at around six milliseconds. So I was able to significantly reduce the, the um, yep, I'm gonna keep this in there. You know what I'm talking about. 
it's really useful, okay? You, you get the point. Just keep in mind, it is still an alpha, so it may be buggy. I wouldn't recommend using this plugin while you're streaming, so just do some tests off stream, and then once you're happy with your performance, then you can go live. Multi-streaming has gotten really popular this year. Twitch announced last year that they're gonna be walking back their TOS to allow you to stream to other platforms like YouTube and TikTok, while at the same time still streaming on Twitch. And with that, a new plugin from Atom came out called Atom Multistream. I've personally been using this plugin basically all year. I even upgraded my internet from 20 megabits per second to a whopping 40 megabits per second. I live in Australia and that's like the best I can do. We have poverty internet here. There've been other multi-streaming plugins as well as services like Restream.io, but I've been really impressed with Atom Multistream because it uses your own network, so you don't have to pay a single thing. It's gonna be free, it's gonna be free forever. And if you set it up right, it's not even that hard to run in your PC. You can stream to Twitch and YouTube using a single stream so that it's not any harder on your PC to encode. You just need to have the extra bandwidth to use it. You can even send different audio tracks to different platforms. So YouTube is really strict with copyright. So I've set up my streams such that None of the music that I play in my stream ever goes to YouTube, it only goes to Twitch. It also integrates with their other plugin, Atom Vertical, so you can stream in both a horizontal and a vertical format at the same time. I made a bunch of videos on Atom Multistream this year, I think I'll link one of them in the corner again. It's really good. So far, this is my favorite way to multi-stream. I will say though, a year from now, I might have a different answer for you. Stream Elements is cooking up their own multi-streaming plugin, and let's just say they're doing some things that none of the other multi-streaming plugins are doing. I'll have a video of that very soon, so if you're not subscribed, you should totally do that. Does that work? I hate people asking to subscribe. It sounds desperate, and I don't even know if you guys do it. So um, yeah, anyway, just do whatever you want, okay? Next is something I had no idea I ever needed, but now I cannot live without it. I mean, I could, I could physically live without it, but you like, I'm gonna keep it going, you know what I'm, okay. You ever added a source into OBS, but you can't remember what scene it's in? Or maybe you needed to change settings in your camera, but then your camera is like buried in a bunch of nested scenes, so it's really hard to find. The OBS quick access utility adds a search doc into OBS. So you could just type in the source that you want from anywhere in OBS. You can search for sources, filters, scenes, even files, and you can access the properties of those filters without ever having to manually search through your scenes. It's kind of like Spotlight for Mac. You can even set a hotkey for it so it doesn't waste any screen real estate, but you can also add a dock that's always present if you want that instead. So anytime you need to look for something, you hit your hotkey, type in what you're looking for, and then it's just that easy. Also, you know how the scenes dock in OBS doesn't allow you to group scenes? Well, one of the really neat things about this plugin is you can create your own custom docs that only contain the scenes that you want. And so effectively, you can group scenes into multiple custom docs and then arrange those docs as tabs. I have over 100 scenes in my OBS setup, but I only ever use like 15 of them while I'm actually streaming. So I made a custom doc that only contains the scenes that I use while I'm streaming. And I have a second doc that I use while I'm sitting at my second PC. So I don't have to have like a massive list of all of these scenes that I'm never actually gonna use. I'm only gonna see the ones that I'll actually be switching to. Again, I made a whole video about this one. You can click it up here. It did pretty terribly on the analytics. So could you like watch it anyway? Even if you're not gonna use it, just click in it. Speaking of docking, is anyone here noticing how bloated OBS is getting? There's like 20 billion docs in OBS now, especially if you use a lot of the plugins that are in this video. And trying to arrange all those docs on the screen is super cringe. I actually made a whole concept redesign of OBS that went off on Twitter. A lot of you really liked my MS Paint work. Basically, the idea of the redesign is that we should be able to make our own custom layouts in OBS and then freely switch between them whenever we want. 
So imagine if we have a layout that's customized for streaming, a layout optimized for editing our scene layouts, a layout that only contains our various different dashboards for Twitch and YouTube. Well, right after I posted my concept redesign, someone released a plugin called JR Docky that does pretty much exactly that. You can arrange your docs in whatever layout you want and then save them. And if you want to switch between them, you just go into the JR Docky menu and select a different layout. It's even possible to map your different layouts to buttons on your stream deck. So you can swap between your layouts at a single press of a button. This has been absolutely game changing for my workflow because between Atom Multistream and the quick access utility, I have so many docs that I use every single day. And even with my ridiculous quad 32 inch monitor layout, it is impossible for me to fit everything I need on one screen. So with this plugin, I just have a few different layouts I use depending on what I'm trying to focus on and I can just switch between them whenever I want. Absolutely must have plugin for uh, anyone, literally anyone. I don't, I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're like a priest or whatever, or like a mechanic, just everyone needs this. So yeah, JR Docky gets my OBS plugin of the year for 2024. That's it. Is that enough plugins for you guys? Don't ever make me make one of these videos again, okay? I spent like 30 minutes trying to think of a different YouTube title to differentiate this video from like the 14 other top five OBS plugin videos I've made. Just leave a comment saying, yeah, this video hit like crack and then subscribe because it makes me really happy when the number goes up. Okay, see ya.